selling snakes to your friends is you get to still hang out with them later. I don't know if you remember Diesel, but had him for a while. We were going to eventually breed him and make some more silverback Bolivians. If you were looking for a snake that actually stays gray, lots of people think that the anneries are going to be gray and stay nice and gray for them, but if you want an animal that really does stay gray, the uh, silverback Bolivians are amazing. And this is not a morph, it's not anery, but it kind of almost looks like it. But they stay nice and bright and silvery. And Priya saw him and was like, Mine. <laughs> I'm in love! She even renamed him. Yep. Whose name's Ragnar now. Yep. But he'll still be Diesel to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's his middle name. <laughs> <laughs> Ragnar Diesel. <laughs> See how nice and big his home is? <laughs> it's always nice to have a nice big home for them if you can give them. It was Priya's first snake. Yeah. Can you show us what you got there? Oh, we got a nice eight foot long shed. <laughs> it looks huge. <laughs> it's, it's pretty huge. It Did you like, you cut it? No, I didn't cut it. It's, you... it's all in one and it even has this cute little mustache on there. I'm mustache? in love with this little mustache. <laughs> Wait a sec, let me it's focusing on your face. There's the moustache. <laughs> oh, we see it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's crazy. It didn't come off like that. It came out like that? Well, I mean, I chopped it. Yeah. Twice, I'm but... just like, I've never seen a shed that I've had, like, come out like that. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I chopped it lengthwise. Yeah, but move it's... back. I can't really see. There we go. Very good. It's, uh... Yeah. So you yeah. took the shed, you cut it, and now it's like, he's a, you got, like, a perfect little... Yeah, I have about four of these now. Very nice. Since July? Yeah, some of them have come out in pieces. Like, I, I thought when you said cut them, I had them cut No, no, like, like this. you cut the inside. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. Or, like, they come out a little wet and they smell like pee because they pee in them. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes people measure their sheds and they think that that's the length of the snake. Not true. But it's not <laughs> true. So it's like that shed is, like, 8 feet. 8.5, and he's about like 6 Yeah, like yeah. 6. But Bolivians... Of all the, like, just natural-looking uh, snakes, just the way they look naturally, I think that the Bolivians look awesome. And there's another one called, like, something Longata or something. Have you seen those? <laughs> look at the mustache. He's got a little mustache yeah. <laughs> But they were, they were like, both snakes were so well-behaved. It's true. Because <laughs> they had a good daddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. What are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can! Just do it! He's a perfect gentleman, but his number one goal in life is to hide. <laughs> <laughs> He's been, like, hanging out in my pocket for, like... A while. <laughs> a, 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 a while. A while. I can't even do it. Yeah. Oh, it's so sweet. Yeah, he thinks he's hiding, but we see you, buddy. We see you. <laughs> oh, so it's been your lifelong dream to have a snake? Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. Uh, I don't know. I guess I was in grade two, and one of those raised reptiles kind of guys came to school and was showing us all the animals and he was like, who wants to hold a snake? And everyone got scared. And I think I said out loud, I was like, no, I don't want to, it's slimy. And he's like, actually they're not. And so he brought out this huge python. It must've been, I don't know. I, my vague memory, I was in grade two, but he brought out this huge animal and put it on me. And I instantly fell in love. And I knew from that moment, I've always wanted a snake. Um, fast forward, I met you, I want to say 2015, maybe. And how did we meet? Uh, you were cutting my hair and we were talking about animals. I was talking about my cat at the time and um, I was like, you know, I've always wanted a snake and you're like, well, guess what? I have a room full of them. Would you like to hold one? And I've never been happier and we've been friends ever since. And I think at the time, you know, I've had roommates and roommates never wanted one. And finally the day came that I owned my own place and then Ragnar showed up. <laughs> my other cat was a scaredy cat, so he didn't really like me much. He wouldn't stick around. But this guy, we sit for hours, like maybe 
on a day where I don't have to work or do anything, he, he'll sit for three hours with me. And he doesn't try to get away? Oh, well, I mean, he does what he's doing with you right now. Go into pockets, go into crevices. <laughs> he likes to hang out around here in this couch cushion. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if, if you could tell, what's what are like the biggest things that you've learned about snakes having mm-hmm. one like? Um, I think it's a lot of the husbandry, like the temperature, the humidity, like all these things are such factors that I care about and I want to learn more about, um, you know, substrates and climbing and areas and yeah, the, the temperatures and just making sure all that's yeah, really right. You've been doing good though. Uh, <laughs> I dropped off diesel. Like you were still a little bit scared. Mm-hmm. So why don't you tell us what... What happened in between then? What what was it that changed you? Like, what were you scared of? What made yeah. you not scared? What got you from the journey of like, even though you're really excited, you really liked him, you were still like a little bit intimidated by him? Yeah. Yeah, I guess my original thought of how this whole process was going to go was that I researched, you know, a certain color type that I wanted in ball pythons. And I phoned you up and I said, you know, I want this ball python. And you're like, no, you don't. (laughs) Um, You want a boa. I just had a clutch of boas. Come see the babies. So I went over to see the babies. Avery very kindly pulled out a bunch of them and showed them all to me. And we were sort of trying to figure out you know, this color versus that color, and this is what they're going to look like when they're older. And then he started pulling out the older ones, and then Diesel and I fell in love, and that was history. But from making that decision on the spot in that moment, then I kind of came home, and I was like, oh, man, what did I do? You know, like, he's a big guy, and this is my first snake, and I'm sort of nervous about, you know, what if I ruin things? What if he doesn't like me? And so I think I actually went home and watched a couple hours of snake bite videos. I was like, what, what happens if he bites me? Like, what's what's the worst case scenario? Do I need to keep stitching materials around? Do I need to have an emergency number? Like, you know, I went to worst case scenario and realized, you know, worst case isn't that bad. I shouldn't be too worried about the bites. And you talked me through that as well. And I think anytime I've had a question along the way, you've been really receptive to getting on the phone and dealing with my panic attacks. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been it's been a good learning process, and I think he's a very forgiving animal. Like he, he's being a good sport to my learning process, and we're we're figuring it out together slowly. But he's been nothing but a gentleman. Like uh, we love spending time together. We, he has his little body language that I now understand, and he's great. I love him. <laughs> so how do you understand his body language? Um, well, I mean, if he's not sitting in a ball and he's not being chill, then he's active. He usually, when he's active, he wants to get out. He's, we were talking about in the car, he's a very needy boy. He needs a lot of attention, but once he gets it, he calms right back down. Um, I haven't seen a lot of like feeding craziness. He's pretty chill about that. Well, like you said, so one thing I thought was kind of interesting about what you said was sometimes he's kind of a little bit movie. Mm -hmm. You'll take him out, hang out with him for like 10 minutes, put him back, and then he calms down. Yeah, yeah. He, he's definitely a needy boy. Um, and he sort of does this thing where he dances up against the glass and then kind of makes eye contact with me. If he sees me out and about, he does come out and say hi and, and we chill and he gets his 10 minutes and that's all he needs. (laughs) But he just needs attention. Yes, yeah, so uh, <laughs> look at me with my selfie stick. <laughs> yeah, I just, I always, I always like to kind of bring to light to people more that there is that because so many groups and even reptile people say don't an- anamorph and anthropomorphize or something. What's Anthropomorphize, it I think. <laughs> yeah basically giving feelings to animals because we want them to and we're not even saying that they have like these feelings like he looks at you and he's like <laughs> yeah no he definitely knows when i'm here and he, he definitely wants to hang it's like i just want you to hold me yeah he sings, he sings exactly <laughs> yeah no they, they just they see you though and they are aware of you they aren't as stupid as lots of people think they are and i was talking about even like playing like you get a dog to play with you and they they're like kind of like silly and stupid and playful like they want to play with you with reptiles maybe it's not even that they can't do it it's that they just can't bother they're just not into it very much like cats i find they are very much like cats in the way that they 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 like certain things and they don't like certain things and it's just like as simple as that 
But they definitely do like like <laughs> like he, he he he's wrapped around my leg and he's just been kind of chilling outside of my pocket. <laughs> Like, for the past, like, who knows how long. At least half an hour. Yeah, just, yeah. like, and we've just been chilling, and, like, he's good. He's he's calm. He found, like, a place that he feels comfortable, and he's good with that. And and they're kind of, like, they're funny, but they, they're they comfortable with certain things. They like certain things. They don't like certain things. And, and when he's done with that spot, he'll get squirmy, and we put him somewhere else. But I think that's the most interesting thing that I can do for him is, you know, moving the log from here to there. That's a big event for him. <laughs> It's just nice to have more perspectives from different people. And I always like to kind of see that the change also of like from from like fear and being a little scared of something to getting to that point where you're so comfortable because it's like at first you guys didn't really have that kind of like communication Mm -hmm. where it's just like you didn't really know each other. So you didn't know what to expect. You didn't know if he was going to come at you or if he was going to be scared or what was going to happen. And now it's like you guys are like buddies. Best friends comfortable and yeah like like at the beginning every little thing like i think i asked you i was like oh why is he breathing like that you're like because that's how they use their lungs (laughs) or like oh is his tongue supposed to feel this way and like every little thing oh what's this on his tail and da 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 da. so you felt his tongue yeah (laughs) well he he was giving me a little face kisses oh he was licking you very nice very nice but you know every little thing was like oh is this supposed to happen is i i don't have kids but i imagine it's like that new mom syndrome (laughs) like uh, everything's terrifying but But you get used to it (laughs) and now you're not scared at all like now it's just like there is that kind of like understanding Mm -hmm. yeah and uh one of the saddest things is some people never even get there some people just kind of get a snake like a novelty to have one and they put it in a home and it's like this scary thing that like they're scared of that oh no like i have to feed it or watch it's exciting we're feeding it oh no the feeding was the scariest part for me i have to say yeah this the feeding took a while to get used to i try not to eat a lot of meat so <laughs> even just having rodents next to my ice cubes is kind of weird but <laughs> you get used to it i do guarantee you get used to it <laughs> But it's just, like, to have that level. Like, you can have a level of, like, friendship, even if it isn't, you know, the typical... Like, it's not, like, what you have with a dog or something. No, no, it's different. But it is it is something. Like, it's still a relationship. It's still, like, they know. It's like, subtle. He, know, yeah. he knows, like, when... He, you, you can see them change from animals. Like, if you just feed them, then every time you see them, you're going to be... They're like food. They get excited. Mm-hmm. But when you actually spend time with them, they come to you for different reasons. Yeah. And I think that's always special. Like it's special when y- y- they come to you and it's not for food. Yeah. If anything, we have to figure out a better method of feeding him because he's always in hangout mode. And I, I need to figure something out different to do when we're feeding him. I try and make like a loud noise or not touch him for a day or two in advance just to make sure he really knows like, today's a different day <laughs> today we're not gonna play today's not playing day <laughs> yeah i just wanted to share a really terrible happy thought with all of you so today started off as a beautiful day with no snow on the ground and now the snow is covered in the ground the ground is covered in snow and there's people outside that like i don't know if you've seen like the scooters that we used to ride on as a kid that were popular for a bit like now they have those electronic ones and they're not like scooters not like a vespa but like a skateboard with a handle stick on it and there's all these torontonians (laughs) they're carrying their scooters home it's hilarious Laugh. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me so happy. <laughs> to just, I, I wish I got it on film to just see people, like, just, just see someone carrying their scooter home. Like, that thing's heavy and now you can't ride it. <laughs> 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 I know it's it's not a scooter, but it's the next best thing. <laughs> it's so terrible. <laughs> yeah.
That's not nice, Priya. I didn't do it. You're the one that pointed and said, why don't you film this guy? <laughs> <laughs>